Hello there, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for being with me today. I hope you're well, and I hope you're looking forward to another episode of Volcano Bay Zoo. So it's been a little while since I've been here. Uh, if you've not watched any of my other recent videos, uh, then you may not know that I've recently moved house. Uh, that's the reason why particularly Planet Zoo videos have been gone for a little while. Um, these zoo videos take a long time to, to make basically. I have to spend a lot of hours building and then I have to record my commentaries. Uh, whereas most of my other series that I do are recorded live so I can easily record a half hour episode of something in half an hour. Um, whereas uh, you know a half hour episode of Zoo can take uh, you know 20 hours sort of thing so I hope you can appreciate that it's um, it's just been a bit tricky for me recently to actually uh, find any time to do any building however I have done some now uh, in fact I've got two episodes of Volcano Bay Zoo ready to go or not ready to go but sort of I've done the building I just need to record the commentaries for them now um, I've had a lot of fun with this one actually Th this episode in particular has, has turned out nothing like I intended but absolutely bonkers um, so if this is your first visit to Volcano Bay Zoo then I do suggest you go and look at the previous episodes uh, where we built this uh, entrance area with this huge um, globe type thing we've got a big hippo area in here with this cool sort of viewing area here and uh, and this really cool looking building just over here um, yeah that was that was the first episode I think this building and um, I still love it. <clears throat> it turned out so nice. So this this uh, this zoo is um, over the top. It's mad. It's bonkers. It's modern. It's extravagant. It's wealthy. Um, that's kind of what I'm going for. So everything basically. Imagine someone had given you an infinite amount of money and told you to go build a zoo, and that's what this is going to be. Um, we've also got a rather cool crocodile habitat that I put in over here complete with a crocodile cafe oh yes I had fun with that one look at that big old jaws sticking out the front there yeah so yeah it's been fun and today's episode is no exception believe me so this is how I started I had a rough idea of what I wanted to do some sort of dome structure um, so I started off just building this um, this sort of glass wall so there's glass panels here we've got wooden beams uh, so metal beams surrounding it here uh, and then down the bottom here we've got some of these um, stone pieces the classic emblem and the limestone fence all off off grid I didn't want anything grid it's, it's one thing I'm trying to do in this zoo is to do most of the buildings or in fact so far I think all the buildings completely with ungridded items because it just allows you a lot more flexibility um, so that's my aim anyway uh, so this is what I started doing. I just sort of created something. I didn't know where I was going. I had no idea what the dome would look like. I had no idea what animal was going to be in it. I just wanted to build some sort of over-the-top dome. And it ends up being a lot more over-the-top than I expected. But this is how I started. So I just started creating a basic glass wall. It's curved. And I thought that's a good starting point. I can duplicate it, extend it, turn it. You know, do whatever I need to it because um, obviously it's off, off grid so you can um, you know you can you can flip it you can turn it you can, you can do whatever you want basically which is the joy of non gridded items um, okay so that's that's the start uh, obviously you will have seen the thumbnail I'm guessing if you've clicked on uh, on the YouTube video and uh, you'll see roughly what it ends up like but um, yeah pretty pretty crazy uh, let me load up the next point shall we and we'll see where I went next right so just expanded on my my initial idea um, I, I created the, the small blueprint and then I started duplicating it and I realized it because of the angle of the glass it it couldn't be a full round dome because it was just going to be too big even for this series going to be too big so this is what I, I started doing next uh, was coming up with the idea of having it um, a bit of an odd shaped dome um, so you could have a, a narrow entrance at one end and a wider entrance at the other so I thought that looked pretty good um, I then hit upon the idea and I've not actually implemented it on here yet I don't think no so I started if you look because I use these metal beams on here you can color these so I have so what I did I, I thought it'd be cool because I decided I, I wanted to have some sort of water animal inside it um, 
So what I did, I coloured the beams at this end, this dark blue, and my, and my theory was that as I went round, I would do each block of nine squares in a, in a slightly lighter shade of blue. So it'd go from a lovely dark blue all the way around here to a light blue. Uh, so that is what I do. In fact, I think it goes sort of to here, and it gets to white, and then it goes back again, and then it goes back again sort of thing. Um, but yeah, that was just a little idea that I had, and it works out really nice. I've also put a stone top on, you can see all along here, using these uh, limestone pieces again. It's the same piece that I've used at the bottom. Uh, it just makes a really nice cap, I think, um, top and bottom, having those stone pieces. Um, now obviously doing it like this, having this sort of shape, created a major problem, because it meant that I was never going to be able to build a proper roof to it. So then I would have to come up with a different idea for the roof. Um, which worked out really nice. I mean, as I was building the roof, I was just thinking this looks terrible and it's not going to work at all. But actually, once it was on and in place and coloured and everything, actually the roof looks really cool and it kind of works uh, with the building. And uh, it's not even attached to the building, which is the clever thing about the roof. It's more more like a, I don't know, like an umbrella over this this building. In fact, this building isn't really a building because it's it's just these curved walls. It doesn't really have much else to it in the end. Um, but it looks really good. That's the main thing. The whole thing comes together nicely. Um, but yeah, this was kind of the initial stage of, of getting the size. And obviously you can see that's a massive, massive building. I think it does stay this big as well. And it, it ends up over here. Um, but I think it does end up roughly this sort of size. I don't think I shrank it down at all. So you can see it's it's daft. It's it's over the top. It's massive, but I love it. Oh, I forgot to say as well. If, if in case this is your first viewing of uh, of volcano, basically, I've also done a uh, a dormant volcano here with our um, seals in it. Um, so you've got sort of underwater viewing tunnels under here, and you've, you've you know you've got a, a big viewing area here, and then you've got these big over the top staircases back here um yeah sorry i just thought I, I just wanted to point that out in case this is the first time you've uh, you've been to this zoo right let's crack on then i will load up the next save point and here is our roof i did tell you it was over the top yeah so um <laughs> what can i say um actually first let me just point out the coloring that i was talking about in the last segment with these glass windows you can see it's a dark blue then a lighter blue and a lighter blue and then it goes to white and then it starts to go back dark again up until here and then it goes light again it's just a little touch i did it on both sides um just a little detail like that you can see the difference when you stand back and look at it and it just little things like that that i like to do just adds that little element of uh, of detail and and different textures different colors that kind of thing i love the shadow that this roof makes on the floor here um, so the roof, very simple structure. I just made it with these um, the plaster wall pieces all coloured. Um, a very simple round star at the top, and then I just created the legs that come down to here, and then I extended some. Actually, I extended all of them and then deleted the ones that I didn't want. Um, what I then had to do, and this was very complicated and very long-winded, because originally it was just this thin layer, and it came down to the ground, and it didn't look solid enough on the ground it just you know having this thin bit i was like well it doesn't it doesn't look like it's a weight supporting structure um, it needed something chunkier down here so these leg pieces i had to then make individually and this was a pain you can see all the different pieces that had to go into here and then so i had to do that i then had to create both sides as well so you've got all the the pieces on this side to make up this white one here and obviously then these pieces on the back i then had to take that and duplicate it onto all of these legs individually um because it just i tried doing the whole rotation thing and it did not work don't know why it just wouldn't work it was so annoying so yes yeah, so i had to individually copy these leg pieces and uh, and move them around uh, and line them all up and yeah it was not fun in fact look i've not even done it quite right because there's the odd little bit like that that still shines through you see how annoying it was trying to get it all lined up but anyway I, I i'm i'm guessing i spotted that and and corrected it in a later episode but we'll, we'll see 
So there we go. So that's our massive dome. And that is, that is sort of the structure of the building now. So you, you've got three different things. You've got two different wall pieces down here. And then you've got this huge dome over the top. I love it. I've, it's, just, it's different. That's what I was trying to do. I was trying to create something different and unique. And it's definitely that. I mean, if you come back to the entrance here, you you can't miss it, can you? Let's be honest. You walk through here, you see this massive globe in front of you here, and then look at that in the distance. You can just see something, and you just think, "Wow, that is huge!" And it is. And you come all the way through here, and you would stand here and you go, "Oh my God, look at that!" So yeah, there we go. So that's um, that's our, our roof structure done. Actually, it does get more because in the end I do add a piece up here and you'll see what and why I do that in uh, a little while. Um, at this stage, I kind of had an idea of what animal I was going to put in. Obviously, I can tell you because the thumbnail would have spoiled it already, but it's going to be penguins. So as soon as I did this and coloured it blue, I kind of realised that it had to be penguins in here. Because penguins would be more than happy not having a solid roof. They wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't care about rain. So, yeah, it just made sense. And with the colouring and the glass and everything, I don't know, it just looked watery to me. So it made sense that uh, the penguins went in. Um, so, yeah, so there we go. Right, let me, uh, let me load up the next bit and see what I got up to next. Okay, so what have I done? Well, I've put in a pathway first. Um, I love this path. It looks watery, doesn't it? So it had to be this path. Obviously, it just makes a nice loop all the way around the edge. I made it as wide as I possibly could. Uh, it goes all the way around and eventually it will lead out here to something else. Filled the middle in with a whole load of water. Uh, put in a custom... Is it a custom fence? No, it's not a custom fence. I think I do customise the posts later on. Can't quite remember. But no, it's an in-game fence. Really nice in-game fence, actually, this one. Um, so the, the penguins obviously have got a lot of swimming space and I've given them a nice beach as well over here got the gate here uh, this was before they introduced the um, small gates into the game so I actually did a lot of this building before I moved house and um, yeah the, the, the small gates have only just come in in the last expansion pack so um, it's the sort of thing I, I can go back and replace it at some point but yeah, so they've got this nice beach at this end uh, and then lots of water to swim in. I give them lots of islands and things as well, but we'll get to that later. And of course, the main thing that I added here, as you can see, I, I put a plug in the roof. So this is a whole separate building here. 348 objects, as you can see. It's um, actually, what did I use here? Just just blocks, that's it. Yeah, to make it nice and thick. So it's lots of these uh, these big plaster blocks. Uh, colored dark blue and then I put water fountains here pointing directly down so it looks like they're squirting from this lip here if, you can, if I can actually get in there um, so yeah it looks like the water is actually coming out of here and it pours straight down the hole so you end up with this massive nozzle coming all the way down here and just chucking water down and into the water there um, I, I thought that was so cool I just I just love the idea of there being this massive waterfall in the middle coming essentially from nowhere. I mean, where's the water coming from? There's no pipes leading up here to it. I guess somehow the water is being pumped up through these very flat surfaces. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. That's the good thing about this game. And certainly the way I'm doing this zoo, this is not a realistic zoo, is it? Let's be honest. Um, so yeah, so that that was uh, that was very cool. I was very pleased when I came up with that idea. Um, so yeah, sort of completed the dome effect up here as well. We're putting a proper roof on that middle area there. Um, so there we go. It's uh, as you can see, it's taken shape rather nicely now. Very pleased with it. Um, oh yes, you can <laughs> there's, a, there's a ring of water out here. So this 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 is um, as anyone knows when you use um, these pieces in the game. It's very hard to reselect them once you bury them inside an object. You have to move the object. And obviously there were so many of them here. Um, so there, what, I, what I originally did was had, I had these connected to these ones. So if I needed to highlight them, I could click on these ones outside here um, and, and be able to then see where these ones were. Once I'd got them in the right place, I then um, 
combined them into this building here i think i think they're part of this building <laughs> i don't know i might have left them as their own building actually but you can't either way you can't select them i don't know let's have a look yes i did actually I, look so that's its own building and then you've you've got this which is its own building but i think what i did i had that connected to that so that i could select them while they were inside here or something like that anyway there's there's various techniques you can use to be able to select things but um yeah they look pretty cool i like them i could just leave them hovering like that in the air couldn't i still looks good but i won't don't worry um should i move that back there we go right let's uh let's move on and uh, load up the next section right we've done quite a lot this time uh before I move inside and show you what I've done in there, um, let me show you. I had uh, I had this space here, basically between the areas, so between this building, between the hippos and the penguins. So what I was thinking is, it, it, when you go to real zoos and parks and you know um, theme parks stuff like that, there's an awful lot of pathway because they get so many people in in tight spaces, um, you know, crowds of people around certain attractions. So they try to keep it as open as possible so that's what i wanted to do here was just link it all up with different pathways try and create as many different pathways as possible for people to get from a to b to c sort of thing um so this was my basic layout it was it was a really simple thing of just just filling it all in with these pathways obviously you've got these gaps and the, the idea was that i would just fill all these gaps in with rocks and so it all blends together it, it, it kind of makes it look like it's not even a pathway it's like this one big area of uh, of path or ground or you know floor and then someone's just put a load of rocks down in it so that's what it will look like in the end but i just wanted to show you that that's my sort of layout um that i put in underneath obviously the pathway will eventually go all the way around the back here and link back up at this end uh, right so inside i've had a bit of fun designing our penguin habitat and the penguins are in or they're getting in i think they're still being delivered actually um so obviously they 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 needed some nice islands and things to get out on so what i did i created um a pattern here of rocks uh, using these nice flat ones but giving them a bit of height variation as well making some shallow watery bits and and then i kind of just copied and pasted that around a bit uh, raised it up dropped it down created a few little islands here and there and then decorated each one a bit differently so you've got these lovely palms can't remember what these ones are they yeah the african oil palms you've got the small ones as well um just yeah just just randomly dotted around you've also got i love i love these boats i don't know why they're in the game but they're they're great little things with this sort of habitat where you can just stick these random canoes like you know one there one there um, and they, they just make great little sort of fun pieces just just adding a bit of detail or something fun for the uh, the penguins to hop around on um, I added some water effects in here so where this this water comes splashing down of course it would cause a bit of a, a splash down here look at that we've got a nice little one of our little penguins sitting on the rock there enjoying a bit of a shower what was it Brunelda of course she seems to be having fun Look at them all having fun. It's a fun place to be, this. Daloxolo and Malundama. They do have some crazy names. Um, but they, plenty of them having a good swim as well. So this is perfect for them because it's shallow. They don't need deep water. Um, I think if you give them a deeper area, they, they do do deep diving. They do they, oh, they do, do. They do do deep diving. Try saying that five times quickly uh yeah um but uh, you know in this habitat it, it didn't it didn't matter it didn't really make sense i just i wanted it to stay shallow they've got their rubber duck of course uh then the beach area as well here i've just decorated it uh, with various little rock formations they've got some more enrichment items some feeding things and little play things um little block of ice over there you can see the, the penguins are all over the place and they absolutely love it they can go everywhere um you know they can get up on all the islands let me just show you that so there we go so you can see they can pretty much go everywhere inside the habitat so yeah they're very happy and it, i mean this would be a cool place for penguins to live wouldn't it it's like penguin paradise look at that i've actually got two rubber ducks so another one over here and they've got these little platforms as well they can use them so yeah, I was very pleased with how this turned out. 
Obviously it's not quite finished yet, still more stuff to be done. Um, but as a basic structure, that is pretty cool. I think you'll agree, or I hope you agree. If you don't, let me know. <laughs> if you don't like it, what's wrong with you? Uh, okay, that's fine. If you don't like it, you don't like it. It's not a problem. Um, you know, each to their own and all that. But I liked it. I had a lot of fun with this. Um, and still more to do. So I've got lots of detailing to do outside here. Uh, still a bit more inside. I'm pretty sure I do do do. Oh, I keep saying do do. I do apologise. Uh, I'm pretty sure I do something with these um, these posts at some point. Can't quite remember. I think I put little lights on them. Like I say, it's been a little while since I built this. Um, I can't quite remember. But yeah, I think that's what I did. I sunk lights into all of these posts so that it looks good at night because that is something that I'm working on in in this zoo. I wanted everything to look good at night, so I've already got. All these other pieces well lit you know they all look quite atmospheric at night so you know not over the top but suitably lit up so you got your red volcano you've got your green sort of greenhouse there nice bit of orange over there uh, now obviously this one I believe was going to be blue mostly blue anyway but we'll see that in the end it's not the end yet we're not there but we're getting there um, so let me let me move on let me load up the next bit and um, and see what I did next just a small uh, bit of detail work done here. Um, one of the things I did was change these pathways so they all looked the same. I, um, I think I had this one here as a separate, um, it was this wooden one and it just didn't look quite right. Um, so I changed them all to this, um, I don't know what texture this is meant to be, but it looks nice anyway. I liked it, so that's what I went with. Um, I also put in another path actually under these arches here, got a small path like a little garden path that comes through here um, and eventually meets up again over here um, and some basic decorating I didn't want to do anything too over the top with all this um, so like I said I did rock work all around here just covering up all the gaps and then just some of these simple cypress trees I really like these uh, as structural trees they just look nice um, you know they, they give you a nice bit of green but they don't block your view so you can still see everything through them which is nice um, so you've got sort of smaller ones here. I, I, I tried to get the size thing going on again. So you've got small and then medium and then big. Um, so you, again, you, you, you're, you're not blocking your view with anything big. Um, you know, you have to look through small ones to see medium to see big. It's kind of a, a scale type thing. Um, one thing I did do, which was kind of fun, was create a custom flower pot for these large ones. So you can see this is an African planter. So it's just a single... Um, plant a piece like that I turned it upside down uh, and then I just duplicated it around I just just did the old circle technique there and created this new planter a nice big one uh, I like doing stuff like that come up with creative ideas for these big plant pots thought that looked pretty cool obviously these could have just been growing in the ground but I just felt like I wanted them in a big pot of some sort so that's what I did um, I went with hydrangea plants all the way along here. I just, again, I wanted sort of big and bold, you know. I don't want fancy little um, flower borders that would take a lot of looking after. You know, just big shrubs and things. Trees like this that barely need any looking after at all. These, these shrubs need sort of pruning once a year and that's it. And then in the middle here you've got this low growing stuff here, which again just doesn't really need much. I've left the grass long underneath in places, so you've got sort of weeds and bits of grass coming through. You know, just adding a little bit of extra texture to it all. Um, just, yeah, I, th I think it, it looks nice. It fills the gap. It's simple. Again, it doesn't block the view because I didn't want anything uh, to block this, this cool view through the glass here. Um, you know, so as you're walking along, you, you could be all the way over here and you could look through all of this and you can still see through because there's not too much blocking you so that that was kind of what I went for there um, so that's that area is kind of done I, I think I do some more detail with seats and lights and whatever and that'll be our final edit um, indoors again not finished yet because I haven't done the lighting or the seating or anything in here uh, but what I did do because I needed them to have a keeper hut so over at this end I just built a little keeper hut, really simple, I just extended this wall here so I just angled it and brought it in, built a very simple um, hut here with grid pieces, nothing too fancy here, didn't need to be, decorated it with a couple of trees 
um, and that, yeah that's it that's that that that's all it is there is a tree here that obviously is coming through the roof I'm pretty sure that doesn't stay like that I would have spotted that so hopefully uh, I correct that at a later point um, but yeah so at least they've got their keeper hut here it's right next to the entrance so the keepers don't have to go too far to get their penguin food so uh, essentially that is the the habitat done so the the last thing that i do is the detailing so the lighting and the uh, seating bins that kind of thing um, but yeah you can see it's it's kind of looking finished now isn't it um, i didn't do the same on this side the reason i i didn't uh, copy this to this side was because I just didn't know what I was going to build over here um, and I still don't uh, I have done one more building in this zoo uh, which I actually built over here somewhere but it ends up being here and this becomes a lake um, so a bit of a spoiler for you there so that that kind of goes into this area here so I still haven't built in this area um, uh, so I don't think I've done anything around this side of this habitat yet because I might want a little pathway to snake in and out of here or something I, just, I don't know yet um, but obviously this side was already connected to the hippo habitat here so it made sense to fill in the gaps on this side right so I think just one more save point to show you which will be the final product and um, that'll have all the lighting and stuff and I'll show you what it looks like at night as well so let's load that up and here we are with our final habitat so what have I done like I said detailing so not too much um, got some lovely lamps these are these sort of traditional English style lamps outside here with the nice traditional benches and the uh, and the old metal bins as well I wanted to keep it all traditional out here I don't know why I just thought it looked nice so you got all sorts of lighting around seating is just around this area I didn't put it in here I, I thought these areas would be quite crowded so uh, I've just kept the seating over here I mean people would sit down on the rocks I suppose all around here as well so not necessary to have too many seats but yes there are seats there there are also seats on the inside pathway here next to the hydrangea bushes and then as we go in I have done what I said I did which was put lights on all of these posts and as you can see these are all individual lights that had to sink into the posts um, all the way around the entire habitat oh yes that's dedication for you yeah that did take me a little while it was a bit of a pain but there we go um, and the other lighting that I decided to do was and it's a little bit in your face these huge things here um, so these are the stadium lights massive great big lights uh, and I put these on the underside of all of these pillars around the outside including the two at the end there and the ones over on that side as well um, and the idea of them was basically just to provide some some basic lighting around the outside area and just comes through onto the inside because most of the inside is light with the so sort of lit up with the lights uh, around here um, but I just needed something else out here uh, and that 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 is it <laughs> that's the habitat done so let me show you what it looks like at night so outside you just got some subtle clear lighting nothing too much and then inside boom look at that I love it it looks really nice and blue doesn't it um, because you got these are just normal lights but they really really create this lovely effect on this flooring around here it's a really nice sort of marbled effect of the lighting around here um, and then all of this under here because you've got um, I, I don't know I suppose, it, it just looks blue doesn't it I don't know what effect is making it look blue but it does it works uh, there is some under lighting on all these trees as well because I think these trees always look nice um, when they've got a bit of under lighting just so it just highlights the uh, the trunks of the trees in particular they look really nice and then like I said you've got the big stadium lights the big orange stadium lights that are just providing a little tinge of orange because orange and blue look really good together um, so that was my thinking there of making them orange instead of blue I did orig originally I did have these stadium lights as blue but it just didn't look right with too much blue so I went with uh, I went with orange because I thought it looked pretty good. Right, let's get it back to daytime, shall we? 
So that's it. That's our penguin habitat. The penguins absolutely love it. Oh yes, I did put a lot of rocks around on the floor. I forgot about that. That was something I added in later on as well. Just to make the floor of the habitat a bit more interesting. Um, so again, I just created a, a, a pattern and just duplicated it all around the floor of the, the, the water area there as well. Just to, yeah, just to add a bit of, bit of texture to the flooring so it was a little bit boring just being sand. Um, I think that's basically it. I don't think I did any other small things. Um, no, I think, yeah, there we go. I think, that, that, I think that's that. Cool. Um, so what do you think? I, I, I like it. I'm really, I really, really pleased with how it turned out. Um, I think if I could change anything, I, I, would, I would want a different texture on this dome. Uh, particularly this light blue bit just looks a little bit plasticky to me doesn't it but you know it is what it is I can't do much about that that's that's the material that I've got to work with um, I don't mind it I mean I, I mean I love it don't get me wrong I absolutely love it I think it, it's just mad and that's exactly what I went for I wanted it to look a bit a bit bonkers and over the top uh, that is what this zoo is all about so that, there's our aerial view it's coming together well isn't it I know I'm building all over the place you know you've got the crocodiles here and you've got your your volcano over here with uh, with your seals in it um, but that's what I'm gonna do wherever I you know whenever I have an idea of something to build I'm just gonna go and build it doesn't matter where it is um, I've had a few ideas of what I'm gonna do on these mountain areas over here but it's it's a big complicated thing so I'm not really sure how I'm doing it yet um, but that is our penguin habitat done and I'm very pleased with how that turned out so you know let me know what you think do you like it is it bonkers enough do you want me to go bigger and more bonkers next time you know I don't know let me know um, right so next episode is I think the next episode is just a building I don't think there's any animals involved in it yet uh, I can tell you that it ends up here and the animal will eventually be something in the water here because this this gets filled with water uh, and the building goes here uh, it's a very cool building I'm very pleased with it um, I just didn't know what I was building it for <laughs> I still don't to be honest it's just there it's just there as sort of a, a viewing area um, but yeah so that's gonna be our next episode um, but until then please do um, leave any comments if you've got something you want to say uh, if you've enjoyed the episode then please do hit the like button for me uh, I know it's not something that everyone likes to do but it really does help me out on the channel gets the uh, the video put out to more people more people means more subscribers more subscribers means more success doesn't it more community more more people more yeah more of everything more zoo builders going on it's great it's all good um, brilliant so let's leave it there then so thank you for spending a bit of your spare time with me I always appreciate your company and hopefully I will see you again in the next episode or over on one of my other videos there should be some more tiny zoo on the way um, but there is at least one more episode of Volcano Zoo or Vo sorry Volcano Bay Zoo I should say uh, on the way um, and no doubt I will be doing some more buildings soon um, there is things going on like I said I've just moved house I've also got a baby on the way which is very exciting uh, but inevitably that will cause me to have a lot less time for uh, my YouTube channel unfortunately that's just a fact of life um, but yeah I'll keep you up to date with that and uh, all other goings on uh, in my life uh, but until I see you again thank you very much and take care bye for now